I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to take a look at the final video I started but then decided to redo for my collaboration with Knit Crate's Dive Into Dying course where I filmed a lot of video tutorials to go along with a three month subscription where you get yarn and dye and some written instructions as well. Uh, this is still available on Knit Crate's website. My affiliate link with Knit Crate will be down in the video description. But why did I abandon this video? And the reason is something super, super minor. I picked two dye colors to use as dry powders that ended up looking very, very similar to one another. And the final video I ended up making used a very similar color palette, but I tweaked it to pull in some colors that would have more contrast with one another uh, for that dyeing video. And it's funny because I reference this video all the time, and the fact that Chartreuse and Kelly Green are very, very similar to one another, and this is the reason why I like to do crude color swatches and take a little bit of the dry dye powder, apply it directly to yarn to see what the hues are like and to understand how, okay, Frozen may be way, way, way less pigmented than Caribbean Blue, but maybe the tone of the powders is similar. That may not be the best example, but it's the reason why I do crude swatching. So anyway, let's go back in time uh, a few years and see what I was working on. I pre-soaked 200 grams of the Dyer Supplier 7525 stock yarn in some plain tap water for 30 minutes. Today we are going to play with some yellow and green dyes from Jacquard. Today we're going to play with Sun Yellow, Chartreuse, Kelly Green, and Emerald. I placed the 200 grams of yarn in my catering steam pan that is four inches deep, full size, on my stove top. So there are two burners here, and I love using this to dye variegated yarns of many types. I added about six cups of water with one tablespoon of white vinegar, so that way the yarn is at the surface, but if I press, we still have plenty of water to access. Since we are playing with dry powders today, it's important to wear your respirator, uh, safety glasses, and gloves when playing with the dye powder. Turn on the heat and heat up on, I would say, medium to high temperature until you see the yarn start to get nice and steamy. Now that the yarn is nice and hot, I reduced the heat to low, and I aliquoted some of the dye powder in a little cup. And right now, I'm not really speckling as much as I am adding some of this powder directly on top of the yarn. Now you could definitely mix your powder up first, but I am mixing it directly on the yarn. This will give some nice variegated depths and tones in here um, while also still having fun and playing with this color. Uh, this is a really fun way to play if you haven't had time to make stocks. You can even take the dye on your gloves and pat it on the yarn to add that color. A few notes. It's best to start with less color and then add more as needed. Um, and I don't like to wait too long between adding the powder on and then coming in with a dedicated dye metal spoon to spread out the color. Uh, it is helpful to have some kind of paper towel or rag on hand to dry your fingers between going in the different colors. And one of the big reasons why I aliquoted the dye first before going into it is that um, I don't want to go with damp hands back into the original container. Starting with our Kelly Green, I am adding some down here. You can see the steam sort of collect on the outside of my cup, which is the big, big, big reason why I am dealing with this in a cup um, instead of um, going directly into the container. Not that my fingers would fit very well in the small Jacquard bottles, but oof, I love, love this color. And I'm definitely gonna want more of it. So you see that I started small 
There's a little bit of blue in with this color. I got some in the middle, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Let's add some more. Okay, taking some more of this color and adding it on. And if I weren't to move around the color, then we could definitely get some speckles from this green color. But our goal today is to get a little bit more pigment on the yarn, at least for now. And uh, whether you use a spoon or I'm tapping quickly, but if the yarn is super hot, I recommend having a little more caution. We will be going back in to add color to the other side because you see that we're not getting super deep color penetration. But since it hasn't all absorbed yet, you can move things around and help with that color coverage right now. And this also helps that dye dissolve. If you didn't want to add eventual speckles onto the yarn, you could do this with more water if you weren't concerned about adding eventual speckles in the end. For the center, I am coming in with some chartreuse, which is going to feel brighter than that Kelly green, but still sort of like a bright yellowy green color. And I tapped with my fingers. I love doing things by feel and by hand, and I also like not using up leftover dyes. Uh, the colors between the chartreuse and the Kelly Green are very similar, but there's a bit more breaking here in the chartreuse colorway. And by breaking, I mean you see some more bright yellow and less yellow patches on there. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we're not done with this yet. So again, if I were to let this sit right now, we could have some fun color and speckles on our yarn already. And I'm just trying to get that dye off of my gloves. But we are gonna come in and add some more intentional speckles, some sharp speckles that we don't wanna move around. Um, and I will be going through that in a moment. In this cup, I have one teaspoon of citric acid powder, and I am going to mix in some of this emerald color. And I'm taking just sort of a non-specified amount on the back of a fork, adding that to the citric acid powder, and then stirring it up. What this does is dilute the powder so that way we can spread it out more easily and get some sharp, defined speckles versus more splotch type speckles like we've done in the past. Now we're gonna take the powder and speckle. I'm taking just a tiny bit of powder in between my fingers and going over the yarn and slowly rubbing my fingers together while I move them. And the slower I rub my fingers together and sort of the faster I move around allows us to get these tiny, sharp speckles on the yarn. And you can go heavy or super light, but since the citric acid crystals are thicker than what we have with, say, um, just the straight powder, this allows us to uh, really control where it goes. Now, you could definitely, definitely, definitely use some kind of uh, application tool like a dusting wand or a salt and pepper shaker. That is all ultimately a matter of preference. There we go. But this allows you to add some really nice restraint onto your yarn. And I say restraint, but you can obviously go as heavy as you want, do something a little more tone on tone, uh, and it's just so fun. If you really wanna make sure your speckles are super spread out, then you can use more citric acid powder for that initial mixing. But I am now going to leave this yarn uh, to heat for uh, 10 minutes. 
so that way these speckles can really set before we move it. Now I can press on these different speckle colors and you can see that it's just not really going anywhere. It is nice and set. And I'm going to lift the yarn and flip over to the other side. We did get pretty good color penetration all told. Um, and so you could see that it's not just surface level. We did get some color towards the middle, but uh, I'm still probably going to end up flipping the yarn a total of uh, three or four times total as I apply the color. But I also really, really like having a hands-on approach with adding color to my yarn. If the water level starts to get a little low, you can add another cup, cup and a half in water with a tiny amount of vinegar onto the yarn. Um, you don't want things to get too, too low because then uh, you could burn the yarn, but this is about perfect. Keep adding the color until you are satisfied. This is your yarn, your story, and different people have different preferences for the amount of color that they want on their yarn. Keep in mind, you can always add more color, but it's harder to take it away. Each time I want to add some of those finer speckles, I let the yarn sit for five to 10 minutes on medium to low heat, so that way those colors can really settle onto the yarn. Kelly Green and Chartreuse are very, very similar, but the Chartreuse breaks apart a bit more. Um, so over there, the green feels a little more uneven. You see a little more yellow shift um, to it, which I think is absolutely beautiful. Once you are completely satisfied with your color placement and saturation, you can turn off the heat and either leave the yarn in the pan to cool or you can set it aside to cool completely before you go and wash it. Don't forget to make sure that your yarn has had heat for about 30 minutes from the time you last added dye. Uh, you don't want to add the dye and then turn off the heat and be done. You want to make sure that all of your colors are really well heat set. So far we've been pretty methodical with where we have applied the dyes, but you can be a little more random with your powder application, layering the color on your yarn, maybe waiting a little bit more before you spread out the color to get those variegated sections. And in doing this, you'll end up with some speckles from the colors already, depending on the hues you're playing with. Then you can layer on your citric acid spe speckles as heavy or as light as you like for another beautiful version with these same colors. And what I'm showing right here is also a really fantastic way to use up any leftover dye powder that you have from your project. Otherwise, you can store leftover powders in a sealed container for next time. We are going to wash our cold yarn in some cool tap water. Uh, you wanna make sure that if there's bleeding that you rinse that out of your yarn. I am going to use a tiny amount of some dish soap in here as well. Sometimes the addition of soap causes or allows you to see whatever bleeding, but our water is clear. I'm going to go ahead and rinse the soap out and hang the yarn up to dry and we can come back and take a closer look at our speckles. Here is the finished yarn that we dyed in this video. And while we know that here we have Chartreuse, here we have Kelly Green, they really, really look extremely similar. And so if I had known that going into this video, I wouldn't have chosen to work with both of those colors with this type of technique. But our sharp little speckles do look really cute. Here is that second skein of yarn that we dyed with more random patterning. This one, using both the Kelly Green and the Chartreuse, you can't necessarily tell which one is which, but it does break things up a little bit more, and so I think I prefer this overall effect. But again, when I went and refilmed this video for the actual Dive Into Dyeing course, I shifted some of the greens a bit, so that way I could have more contrast between the individual colors, because I thought that that made an overall better example of the kind of technique when you could see the difference between the different colors. <laughs> Typically, when I film my videos, I try to share the mistakes I make, the things I would do differently along the way. 
But this is what I try to do in videos that I'm publishing on my own channel. If I have been commissioned to make a video for another company, I don't want to share my doubts or second guessing in the video because I'm trying to make a more cohesive tutorial for a different type of audience. And so it's been fun to see me go back through some of those videos, redo voiceovers and takes multiple times to try to say things concisely versus having more of a stream of consciousness than often happens in my videos. I do have a playlist with all of the Dive Into Dying videos that you can find on my channel, or you can go and check them out over on the Dyer Supplier YouTube channel. The final yarn is really, really pretty. I'm surprised it's taken me this long to share this footage, especially since this is the footage that encouraged me to do a whole series of swatching videos and to look at colors within one brand and to compare colors within different brands so that way I can have a reference when I want to go and play with the dry dye powders. But anyway, please make sure you subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. If you love the yarn I dye, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Almost all the yarn in my shop has been featured in a Chemnitz dyeing video and it's a great way to help support the content here. Thank you so much for watching.